HIV and AIDS have been with us for a quarter of a century. And as a result, over that time, millions of people worldwide have lost their lives. But that could be about to change. With help from London's African community, scientists based here in the capital are on the verge of a medical breakthrough, one which could halt the spread of the virus. Anya Sithra meets the unlikely partners tackling HIV. September 2007 and a small group of HIV workers and scientists gather at the National Gallery for a reception which will mark a milestone in their work. Many young women, even in the UK, are very complacent about their sexual health. Many of them believe that they cannot get infected. The fact that even within Europe, the UK has the highest rate of teenage pregnancy. So we know that our young, pe- young women are still having unprotected sex. Poverty isn't just about money or material things. There's poverty of information, whereby people have no access to information. The highest rising number of infections amongst heterosexual people and almost 50% of those are amongst women. Nearly two-thirds of people living with HIV worldwide live in Africa. Some of their family members who've moved to London have discovered over the years that they too are HIV positive. Now, a small group of Londoners are taking the initiative and helping scientists develop a new barrier to HIV transmission called microbicides. These women are actually helping scientists crack the epidemic that is HIV AIDS. With 26 million diagnosed cases in sub-Saharan Africa and women in the UK three times more likely to be infected during sex than men, the importance of their work here in London will have a global significance. For the first time, we're following a group of London women as they help scientists come up with a breakthrough. One of the group, Winnie, has been an HIV advocate, helping others for 19 years since finding that she carried the virus in 1988. I think these meetings are really important, especially for advocates of uh, products like microbicides, for us to really, you know, get the knowledge that we need in terms of what the process is like, what the end product is going to look like, so that we can give this information to the communities, so that once the product is ready, they are aware of what it's going to look like, and all we have to do is to really point them in the direction of where they need to access it. From early work in the lab, it's taken the team at St George's University of London 15 years to get to this stage in their research. In 2005, the government put in £26 million to complete the final stage of a clinical trial to assess the effectiveness of microbicides. Soon, the scientists will find out how successful their work has been. Professor Robin Shattuck leads their team. This is an example of the type of product we're trying to develop. It's a a gel that would be applied topically to prevent HIV infection. And you can see here, this is what the gel would look like. This type of approach is particularly tailored towards women because we know at the moment there are many situations where women cannot uh, use condoms either because uh, they want to fall pregnant or because their partners uh, are not willing to use condoms. I'm intrigued that there's a simple gel, this one, that can actually kill off HIV, save millions of lives. I mean, why isn't more being done about it? Well, we would agree with you that it needs to be developed as quickly as possible. And this type of low-tech approach is only now really starting to get the funding that's required to really push the development as fast as possible. So if you are successful, what difference do you think it will make? Even if this gel was 60% effective, if it was introduced into 73 low-income countries, within three years we could avert 2.5 million infections. The time has come for the team from St George's to get the message about microbicides out of the lab and onto the streets. And the best way to do that is to enlist the help of those who are fighting the disease in the community. The visitors are counsellors from the UK African Microbicides Working Group who help people living with HIV and AIDS. 
the discussion starts straight away, as the group have many questions to ask. So what really motivates you, given that this particular science is such a slow and intense pro process? As science is a journey, and along the way we discover the unknowns that we're looking for, and also it throws up surprise results that we really weren't expecting. What really keeps me going is that ultimately one day what I do could make a big difference. To actually come here and see firsthand your work <laughs> and to imagine that in this laboratory there could actually be a miracle, you know, a production of a product that will really empower women, that is amazing. So we are very grateful for the work that you're doing and it keeps us going, it also gives us the motivation to keep going. So let's go for it. <laughs> <laughs> actually the laboratory where we work with all our HIV infected cultures. Why does it take so long before we can actually get a product onto the market and what do the scientists have to actually do? Typically in science everything has to be repeated three times in exactly the same manner. So if you change one part of your experiment, you have to change it for three experiments. Are you certain that we will end up with a microbicide that women can use? I think one day yes. It won't necessarily be the first product that goes into clinical trials. There may be failures along the way, but it's important to learn from the failures and carry on and keep going until we get something that really does work. The macrobicide is going to be preventing people from getting HIV. Yes. So what are the benefits for HIV-positive people, women living with HIV? Probably the main focus of the field has been at protecting those that aren't already infected. Mm -hmm. But I think in real terms, if an HIV-positive person, male or female, were to use a product, they could hopefully protect their partner. Mm -hmm. This pack contains um, one applicator. After the visit to the labs, there are several things that Trish and Martha want to know. How can the gel be made user-friendly? How will women want it to feel? And when it's available, will they use it? Can we have a feel? Of course you can. <laughs> It's just gel. I think so. you can probably ah. rub it onto your hand as well and you'd have an idea of... Yeah, it should be perfectly acceptable. Ooh. Sort of the consistency, you know, mm -hmm. it, isn't, it doesn't feel like something overly thick that yeah. would be noticeable yeah. Yeah. in a, in a um, relationship. Mm. So is there a possibility that we could have one that you could insert maybe once a month or something and then you wouldn't have to use it every day, for instance? There's, there's certainly hope that we could possibly do that, but unfortunately um, the first generation of microbicides that are currently in clinical trials um, are predominantly compounds that have to be present at the time that the virus interacts with the cell, and if your compound isn't there, then you will get no protection. Later, the scientists meet the group again to seek more answers. How should they market microbicides, as they know that their success will be dependent on their uptake? I think one burning question is, um, do your communities really know what a microbicide is? Well, um, I think increasingly through our work, um, communities are learning about, you know, about microbicides. The other challenge I think is around the actual uh, name itself. If I went into a shop and you know, I was told, okay, we have these products that can protect you from an STI, one of them is called... I don't know, something pesticide, whatever, and one of them is called the love cream. <laughs> but also, it's not just that the word microbicide sounds like, a, you know, a pesticide. It just conjures up different things for yeah. different people. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it is so important that this product, you know, comes out as quickly as possible. The series of meetings has been the beginning of a collaboration between scientists and HIV workers, which both sides agree will help them in their battle with HIV. Beyond the moon, beyond the stars. We need a healthy future, we need a healthy generation. And if we can have another option of protecting ourselves, then it can only be a good thing. It will probably revolutionise women's sexual health, just like what the pill did for women. But the good thing with microbicides is that it will go beyond that because it will protect them from HIV. I think for us it's so easy to, to be stuck in the lab all day that it's, it's fantastic to have the opportunity to liaise with the community.